Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the CTKS Method. In this video, we're going to go through the latest news and then we're going to go through an analysis of the charts, figuring out which one is better. Is it better to get into Sol, ETH or Bitcoin? Let's find out by Let's Run the Numbers. All the indicators that I use are from ctksmethod.org. We're going to look through Bitcoin, Ethereum and Solana's price chart. You'll see that they really came down in the bear market. But life is always waiting for you to be ready for abundance. And these charts are going to teach you a phenomenal lesson when it comes to patience. And hopefully that you'll see that abundance is always possible no matter how red the markets get. In news today, projections of a Solana ETF pushing Solana to $1,300. The Solana ETF craze is hotting up with 21 shares landing an application on the SEC's desk. The Ethereum spot ETFs were expected to launch July the 2nd, but the SEC has put the brakes on and said that the SEC is asking for a resubmission of the S1 forms by July the 8th. Sources have said that this may not be the only delay, so just be aware of this. In other news, Glassnode founders see strong rally for Ethereum to $7,500 per ETH. Glassnode is expecting that target price by 2025, and it's pretty much a simple fractal, just applied to the current price action. In other news, SEC just loves to sue people. It's suing consensus for conducting securities via MetaMask. The SEC alleges that Consensus operated as an unregistered broker through MetaMask since 2020. In other news, Solana's up 700% last year and that beat Bitcoin and Ethereum's growth. Solana indeed has done really, really well. But if you understand how to read charts, you'll know that this chart is not all that that it appears. When I was lecturing first and second year statistics, I often had to give media charts to my students to help them to understand if the media was representing data correctly or if it could be represented in a different way. We can see since the peak of the last bull market, Solana came down 96.92% and it just came up to its previous all-time high, up 2.5,000%. I talk about a thing called the 10-5-10 rule inside the masterclass. If you buy something at $10 and it goes down to $5, you've just lost 50%. But it goes from $5 back to $10, you made 100%. That means that the more a percentage goes down, the greater is its retracement. Some of the things to understand with Solana, we had Sam Bankman not freed and all of the things that happened with FTX. And then, of course, the SEC came in and said Solana is an unregistered security and proceeded to hammer Solana. Solana also had a lot of chain problems. It just spent a lot of time down rather than up. Now, Solana's become very bulletproof. It's been doing really, really well. It shook off all of the FTX drama. Many people thought because of FTX and because of the SEC, Solana would go the way of Terra Luna. But it did not. It did really, really well. When it comes to trading and investing, you need to be consistent. And the consistency is often as part of data analysis. Here we're looking at Bitcoin. Bitcoin came down in the bear market. It came down nearly 78%. It's gone up 377% to this peak here. Ethereum during the bear market came down nearly 82% and it's retraced 365% up. Now, of course, it's a little bit lower than that now, but it's done quite well. You might notice that ETH is below its previous all-time high. There's a bit of a gap here. You can see that just pushing through there. Therefore, what was the major growth factor in Solana's price appreciation? It was really the decrease in price coming down nearly 97% 
and all of those associated FTX and SEC actions. Of course, Bitcoin and ETH had SEC actions, but they were the first and second largest cryptocurrencies. Therefore, by market capitalization, they came down less than what Solana did. There's a really good lesson that comes out of Solana's price chart. If a project is very strong, even if it gets hit from multiple angles, it will recover. And if it can recover, look at the percentage gains, even though it comes down so incredibly. This is why this is a real buy on red, sell on green type of ideology. The next time you see some red price action inside any financial market, you can look at it and say, hmm, I remember Solana's percentages. When it comes to assessing if Solana and ETH will hit those price targets, please be aware that no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. Here is the price of Bitcoin, and that's represented by this blue overlay on Ethereum's price action. You can see as Bitcoin came down, what happened to ETH? It came down. What happened to Solana? It came down. But because people are getting interested in doing spot ETFs in Sol, we got this diversion. There's a little bit of strength coming into Sol at the current time, but Sol cannot escape Bitcoin's gravitational pull. I'm just going to zoom in here and show you what I mean. That area on Solana's price chart looked like it diverged from Bitcoin's gravity, but it really didn't. You can see Bitcoin just coming up, going down, flattening out Solana, and then a bit of a push up in Bitcoin's price, a push up in Solana's price. And then as Bitcoin came down, it pulled Solana down with it. It had a bit of a kick up, it had a bit of a curl over, and now it's having a little bit of a leg down. And you can see how it's all playing in to Solana's price chart. We know that all charts go up and down based on their structure. And structure is always all of price history, not just recent indicative price. When we look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin has structural levels. When we look at Solana, Solana has structural levels. And Ethereum has structural levels as well. All of the tier one charts are the predominant thing that moves all of the interdependent structures across all charts. And if you've been doing your cheat sheets, you've been noticing some really interesting things have been happening with the yields. There are some key events that are coming up very soon. The spot ETFs, we know they've been delayed, but the Mt. Gox repayments in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, they're on. Also, the French presidential election, that's important to us because it could impact the yields and the yields definitely impact digital commodities and risk on and risk off sentiment. Also, the Trump sentencing is also coming up. So that could create a lot of volatility. It's also useful to keep in mind that we need to get above this specific resistance level. We need to come up to around that 64 and confirm it. And there's a couple more resistance levels up here to go higher. This is, of course, Bitcoin's chart. Just keep in mind one thing. The SEC dropped the Ethereum lawsuit and that paved the way for the ETH spot ETFs to come out and to trade. When the new month clicks over, the institutions want the lowest price for ETH that they can get because they want to say, look how this thing has performed over time. So we can expect a degree of negative price momentum followed by a lot of positive price momentum. The key question now, is Bitcoin going bullish across the weekend or is it starting to weaken? The only way that we can realistically answer this question is to understand the structure or the CTKS structure of the specific chart. In this case, it's Bitcoin. How do we do that? We need to mark up all the price history. That's included in this indicator. So let's just pop it on. In yesterday's video, I was saying if Bitcoin can get above the 62,200 mark and confirm that as support, it's going higher. We've seen a degree of bullish sentiment coming into the market across the weekend. But this particular level, just under 61,200, is creating a bit of a headache for Bitcoin at the current time. We're also seeing a little bit of a cut under here. If we get negative price momentum, we're heading down to the 66.20 mark. And just 
always bear in mind the price is always moving from structural level to structural level if it can get above it's going to the next one if it can't get above it's going to the one below it's really really simple and you might think hey ken these are really simple lines anyone could draw these well anyone can so long as you have level one and level two standard certification this method of drawing up structural resistance and structural support levels is the world's most powerful, statistically significant buy-sell level detection system. And that's a smart money system. This is where smart money is hanging out. And we can see it time and time again. That's why you need to know your structure. The news is fantastic, but the news is just an explanation of what could happen. Structure is what is happening. We've currently seen the backing off in price from Bitcoin structure because it can't get above 62,200. That backing off is showing weakness inside the alts. And we're seeing a little bit of a divergence here with Litecoin. Keep your eye on that. We always look for divergences. The question is now, which one would you prefer? Would you prefer Ethereum? The ETH ETF is on the way, or would you prefer Solana? Or is Bitcoin more to your liking? Please remember to like and subscribe this video, and you can always reach out to me on X slash Twitter. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.